The problem to me about this pro this house is that I've been broken into several times, five times, and in every case the police have said to me that part of the problem is the fact that this vacant house provides a shelter for anyone who wants to get into my house, a secluded work area for them to do their dirty business. So that's one of the major problems for me aside from it's being just being an eyesore. And also the children like to crawl underneath it and play and at least once I've had to explain to children that playing with matches in their clubhouse wasn't a good idea. Uh, some of the windows is, you know, is um, half boarded. Uh, there's lots of grass and stuff around, which is dangerous. Um, getting, you know, summertime like this, uh, and the grasses, you know, could dry up. Anybody could, you know, accidentally throw a match down and uh, set it afire, and you know, this is very hazardous. I feel like there are weeds growing up here. My husband tries to keep our lawn in decent shape, and the other people around here, this man next door has a beautiful lawn, and all these, these weeds grow up in seed, and the birds and the wind carry them around, and it's a hazard. We have small kids. They can get off in there, and it's also hazardous if the windows get broken out, pretty soon people can get inside there. You may have criminal things happening. Mm -hmm. so there's one house that was abandoned, what, 38 years? Can you believe this? It's over there by St. Andrews. And it's open, you know, and children, there's over by the school there, and the children can get into it, and they're concerned about that. I honestly must say that I'm aware that there were a few abandoned buildings, uh, from driving around, but unless you're really specifically looking for them, you really don't see them unless you live in the areas. And, and uh, so we fortunately were invited by the Albina Fair Share group to spend a better part of a day touring their area, which we did, and uh, they brought a lot of very, very valid concerns that we really hadn't seen in the past. Do you think that um, the city was aware of this problem before your group approached them? I think they were aware of it, but I don't think they were aware of how terrible it was, especially in our area. From what I understand, there's only 200 and some abandoned houses around the city of Portland, but 170 of them are in our area. Uh, what, we do, what we are doing is taking a few at a time and working on the few houses at a time. Uh, the worst ones, I guess, is what we're picking first. And, uh, what we do is invite the landlords to a meeting and uh, we contact them and try to get them to come to the meeting and then when we get them to the meeting we ask them what they're going to do about their house. And we, that's why we asked uh, somebody that lives in that neighborhood to speak for the house because they know more about it rather than have somebody that lives 30 or 40 blocks away try to talk about a house right over here. Mm -hmm. They pick people that are in the area to talk about the house. Do most landlords come to these meetings? Well we had a good turnout the first time but the second time nobody showed up. So we decided we would go to them. And on April Fool's Day, we went to them. They thought we were fooling, but we weren't. So we came home one day, and here is Albina Fair Share with their busload of picketers across the driveway with big signs. And they had distributed letters to all of the neighbors demanding that the na asking that the neighbors call us and demand that we work on the properties and not leave things looking the way they were. And when, I, when they came to the door and I explained to them that my husband was still critically ill, he was just out of the hospital, it was just as though I said he had a cold. They could have cared less. And they would not leave, and they were very aggressive and very unpleasant. They asked her about these two houses that were moved from another place to this corner. And she said, well, something about they had sentimental value or something to them. Well, if they're so sentimental, such sentimental value, why don't she take them and move them on her property, not leave them sitting there? I would be extremely unhappy under the same circumstances. But they have to realize that it's not, we are not deliberately saying, I'm not going to fix those houses. I'm just going to let them sit there. We're not doing that at all. And I asked her, would she like to live next door to something like that? She says, it don't bother her. She's not concerned about it. And, she's, and I asked her, was she going to do anything about it? She says, no, there's nothing she can do about it because she's not interested in, in that house or no other house because she was concerned more with her husband. I said, well, look, could you send someone out to cut the line or something? It's terrible. And I told her how much my insurance was going up. She says, well, that's tough. What are your plans for this house that you are on 10th Street? Oh, I plan to sell it. Absolutely. I do not wish to own property in that area of town mm -hmm. at all.
Why do you think there's so many abandoned houses around here? It's probably a uh, question of economics and uh, um, social concern. Some of the houses, I think, belong to people for one reason or another can't ma maintain them and others who don't want to maintain them. Um, this is a, a low-income neighborhood and therefore I think the pressure, the social pressure is less here to restore a house once it's vacated than it would be other places. And that's why I think they're allowed to stay vacant longer. There's no requirements in either the state or the city ordinances and regulations that really deal with an abandoned house once it's boarded up and secure. Why do you think a landlord would keep a house vacant that long? I can't understand it. <laughs> I've, I've looked at what I can understand of the tax laws. I can't see where he gets any help there. And if he rents the house, he would at least have some income coming in. I would assume that uh, they're looking at possibly some tax law, loss write-offs, uh, speculating. Got to go buying a house and speculate with the way property is going up nowadays. They're speculating on just sitting on it and maybe <coughs> they're making more money by not fixing it up than they would if they were to invest $20 or $15,000, $20,000 to fix it up. And right now we're working with the head of the Bureau of Buildings to get a ordinance passed through the city council where houses may not be left abandoned for more than six months. Uh, of course, what we're obviously hoping is that once we identify an abandoned house, uh, that we can go to the owner and provide him with uh, three or four different options of what he can do to put the house back on the market again. Uh, and if he makes a determination he, does, he wants to do nothing, then we very likely then would have to go into a condemnation process and possibly end up tearing the building down. It's a shame in a town like Portland where there is a crunch for low-income housing and I know many people who, ha who are searching for housing, even in this neighborhood, to have uh, potential livable housing going to waste when there are people really in need. That, I think, is a shame.